We were invited to come explore the North York Moors National Park for a few days in early September. The landscape of the moors is vast and open, with vibrant patches of purple heather as summer becomes autumn. After we arrived, we decided to head out on a five mile walk from where we were staying at the Fox and Hounds in Ainthorpe, up to Ainthorpe Brig and into Little Fry Up Dale, stretching our legs after the drive and getting a first taste of the moors. We've come up to Bank Top Kilns, which is just up the hill from Rosedale Abbey, and it is a beautiful view up here. It's pretty blustery today. You can definitely feel autumn in the air. <laughs> but the heather looks amazing, doesn't it, over there? Oh yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> I love the, uh, I was just reading the sign, it's saying how like the locals used to believe this place was haunted because uh, the iron ore is so rich up here that lightning used to strike. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah. Ooh. It's quite amazing. They still, it's like a geological anomaly. They don't really know why it's so rich. That afternoon we headed to meet Lucy, who runs foraging workshops. She took us on a little wonder in a small woodland, explaining the health benefits of different plants and trees. Foraging is, obviously it's the thing that we have done most um, as humans, you know, and we don't, we tend to forget that. Um, 
that we've been foraging for most of human existence and it's actually only the past 10,000 years um, that we've been farming. The health benefits are absolutely yeah. huge with foraging, not only because it's, it's organic and it's green, mm -hmm. but also it's a lot to do with the root systems on the plants out here and the trees of course, and the fungi as well that form mycorrhizal relationships with the trees. Okay, so one of the um, amazing uses of bramble that not a lot of people know about is that you can actually uh, make a tea with the leaves. So you can have like a green tea, just like pouring boiling hot water over them as, the, as they are fresh, or you can actually ferment them um, and turn them into a black tea, um, which is obviously much better for the environment, we're not even getting it imported. And to do that, you just literally dry them out for some hours, uh, making sure that when you fold them, they don't snap. And then we roll them up to release the enzymes and the juices in there, pop them in a jar to ferment for about three or five days. And um, then when you've done with that, you just dry them out on a baking tray and you've got your own native black tea. Okay, so down here we've got lots of herb Robert. Um, you can find this growing most of the year around actually, but usually um, it, it's accompanied by a little pink star shaped flower um, but obviously this is all being cut down and it's just new growth fresh new growth so we haven't got any flowers here but it's one to watch out for because it really helps with identification um, this is a really really delicious wild edible it's been mainly used as a medicinal herb but it's also a fantastic um, coriander substitute or parsley um, it's got a really really strong kind of coriander flavour and you can use it in all dishes that you would use coriander um, so for example I put it in um, uh, wild garlic salsa or wild garlic bruschetta um, and it also makes a great tea and there's been lots of studies done on its effect with cancer because of its oxygenating effects um, so it's a really good one to kind of just have in your diet every day or be drinking as a tea all the time it's got also full of like loads of amazing minerals and vitamins as well Within about a 200 meter square radius, we learned so much about what we can forage and collected some leaves and berries along the way to make a delicious herbal tea, washed down with some amazing biscuits made by Lucy. Right here, this icing sugar is just pure bramble juice. Um, you can even see the little bits in it as well, which I think is quite nice. So that's the natural um, food colouring. Uh, so bramble juice and icing sugar. And then this one is um, rose hip syrup and icing sugar made with just the syrup that was left over from making um, the candied rose hips here. Hi, I'm Lucy. I run Wild Roots Foraging and I run um, wild food walks um, in North Yorkshire and Teesside, as well as workshops. And I also run wild women gatherings and we've just started our wild men gatherings as well um, so yeah it's all just about reconnecting people to nature and the lost ways of our ancestors and kind of just getting that wisdom back that we've lost We've just come down to the beach at Sands End near Whitby, we're just north of Whitby actually, and it is wild down here. It properly feels like autumn already up here. We're actually at the same latitude as where we live at home, but it, there's definitely more of a chill in the air. It's beautiful. We're going to go for a walk along the beach and then go to a fish shack for tea.
how many bags are you carrying, Athena? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got my pregnancy pillow. Very important. My shoulder bag. Very important. And, and your camera. camera. And the dog. And tabby has got everything else. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I also have this one. <laughs> So we've just checked out of our hotel at the Fox and Hounds in Ainthorpe. It's our last day here on the North York Moors and we are actually just heading up the road, down the road? Yep. Down the road to Danby um, where we are going to head to the North York Moors National Park Visitor Centre. We just thought we'd have, have a look seeing as we're so close. And there's also a cute little bakery in Danby and a store as well that looked quite nice So we thought why not just pop in as we are heading away from this area um but yeah not much planned for the day well actually we'll probably well we'll definitely be doing a lot today but <laughs> yeah, nothing planned at all <laughs> we don't really have anything like specifically planned apart from we are going to like a supper evening tonight um which sounds really really cool i'll tell you a little bit more about it before we go um but yeah between now and then that's like later on this evening we're just going to kind of mooch across the moor um heading towards the coast take Oslo to the beach for a run around because he enjoyed it last night and yeah just explore really just explore the area see what we get up to So we are just in Robinson's Bay, yeah. and uh, <laughs> this place is amazing. Uh, I suppose the, the best word to, uh, or the best words to describe it would be higgledy piggledy. It's very <laughs> old, built on top of each other. It's kind of amazing, actually, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, we're just kind of wandering the little cobbled back streets and just getting a bit lost, and it's amazing. I have been here before, but when I've come before, it's been really busy, like in the summer months. But it's now early September, and there's like hardly anyone here. There's like no one wandering around these back streets, so yeah, we've got amazing. it all to ourselves, and we can just kind of get a bit lost and yeah, explore. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, I have no idea where we are. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna. I think we'll just take this 
take this uh, path behind us. Yeah. See where we go. See where we go. <laughs> <laughs> can't come to the Yorkshire coast without having a hot sugared donut. Said to Harvey we have to get them even though we don't need them. <laughs> it's unlike anything you'll ever try, trust me, just get them. <laughs> mm. So we've just been running around the beach at Robin Hood's Bay or well Oslo has been, and <laughs> Harvey went for a like swim. A lunatic. <laughs> yeah, like an absolute lunatic. Uh, he clearly had a lot of energy. <laughs> um, went for a nice swim. Yeah. The water's warm. Mm. It's great. And we have one final event this evening with the North York Moors Yash National Park. The Yashnal Park. Oh, Yashnal Park. Oh, Yashnal. <laughs> um, we are heading to a seasonal fire supper, um, which is like a long table gathering, and it is with a local chef called Alex Perkins and Polly Baldwin of Jolly Allotment as well. Um, we're super excited. We've never done anything like this before. Um, no, it should be good. Yeah, basically it's just going to be amazing food, like eating outside. I think they're going to cook it over a fire. Um, yeah, it's uh, kind of like similar to like, so we both like follow a uh, guy, Francis Malman, who's mm. an Argentinian chef. Uh, so I think it's going to be quite similar yeah, to that. Yeah, he cooks everything over fire. Um, yeah. yeah, so can't wait to show you. We will just be filming like what we get up to um and that's the end of our trip after that really hope you guys have enjoyed kind of watching what we've gotten up to we've had such a good time it's, oh, been, it's been amazing up yeah there, it's it? been really really amazing um i've been to the north york moors before but never to mostly just to the coast so we did a little bit of coast but we were mostly on the moor so it's really nice to explore differently and i have to say like early september it's really quiet here there's like hardly anyone around like we're at robin hood's bay now which is usually mega touristy and mm, yeah you can see why as well it's like it's beautiful it's, it's amazing yeah i like there's definitely people here but it's like compared to a sunny day in in summer it is really quiet so yeah it's been quite a good time to come no we haven't had amazing weather but it's been yeah it's, oh, it's been, been lovely warm and yeah, yeah. so uh, kind of um kind of so i grew up around bath and um it kind of reminds me of bath but with just less people yeah and uh, just sandstone. a bit more, yeah, yeah, just a bit more open mm. and a bit more empty. Mm. It's, yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's a good area. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and we'll end with a lovely montage of our evening fire supper. <laughs> See you next time. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to eat because I'm stuffed away from <laughs> <Yeah>. lunch. <laughs> we may have had lunch, uh, sugar donuts, and some sweets from the sweet shop in Robin Hood's Bay, um, and yeah, we are eating dinner in about an hour so i'm sure we will eat it though because it will just be delicious oh yes <laughs> anyway bye see you later <laughs> the wild whitby supper really was an incredible experience we ate six courses of the most delicious food cooked over the fire by chef alex perkins and polly baldwin of jolly allotment The meal was served by candlelight on long tables outside under canvas. The view at Coast and Camp Light was beautiful, conversation flowed with the other guests and we felt well and truly nourished and content by the end of the evening and a wonderful few days away on the North York Moors.